Hi, so I'm going to read um, a bit to you from a book called The Volunteer, which is a true story of the resistant hero who infiltrated Auschwitz. Um, as you know, um, I was teach history and um, I've got quite obsessed with everything that goes on at Auschwitz. So um, this one's a little bit different. It's not the normal. Um, it's quite historical. It's got lots of um, actual references to things that really went on. So I'm going to read you um, the beginning chapter. It's the introduction. Trucks rumble to a stop outside. Shouts and gunshots follow. The building caretakers bangs on the door. The Germans are here, he shouts. Hide in the basement or get out through the gardens at the back. The man inside doesn't stir. It's dawn on September 19, 1940, in Nazi-occupied Warsaw. The Germans have invaded Poland the year before, plunging Europe into the World War II. Hitler had yet to formulate his plans to annihilate the Jews. He's intent for now on destruction of Poland by eliminating its professional class. The country is subject to a brutal reign of terror. Thousands of Poles, doctors, teachers, writers, lawyers, Jews, Catholics alike, are being dragged from the streets to be shot or interned. The Germans have opened a new concentration camp in June to hold some of the prisoners. Its name is Auschwitz. Little is known about what happens inside. The man in the apartment has learnt in advance about the morning's roundup and that those arrested were likely to be sent to the camp. That's why he's here. His mission for the undergrad is to infiltrate the camp, forge resistance cells and gather evidence of Nazi crimes. The door crashes open below and boots clatter on the stairs. The man puts on his coat and then notices that the three-year-old boy in the room opposite is standing up, wide-eyed in his cot. His teddy bear has fallen to the floor. Fists start to pound on the door. The man quickly picks up the bear and hands it to the boy as the mother lets the Germans in. See you soon, he whispers to the child. Then, against every instinct he must have, he steps into captivity. Witold Polici volunteered to be imprisoned in Auschwitz. This barest outline of a story sent me on a five-year quest to retrace Polici's steps from gentleman farmer in rural Poland to underground operative in occupied Warsaw, to human cattle in a camp-bound cattle car, and then spy at the epicentre of Nazis' greatest evil. I've come to know Witold well, Yet I find myself returning to that simple sentence and the moment he sat waiting for the Germans to burst into his apartment as I reflect on what his story promises to tell us of our own time. I first heard about Woodhot's story from my friend Max McAllister at a dinner in Long Island in the fall of 2011. Matt and I had reported together on the wards in the Middle East and were struggling to make sense of what we'd witnessed. In, trip, in, trip, in typical bravado fashion, Matt had travelled to Auschwitz to confront history's greatest evil and learned of Witold's band of resistance fighters inside the camp. The idea of a few souls standing up to the Nazis comforted us both that night, but I was equally struck by how little was known about Witold's mission to warn the West of the Nazi crimes and create an underground army to destroy the camp. Some of the picture was filled in a year later in Witold's London longest report kept about the camp was translated into English. The story of the reporter's emergence was remarkable in itself. A Polish historian named Joseph Gorinsky gained access to the documents in the 1960s, only to discover Witold had written all the names in code. Gorinsky managed to decipher large portions of it through guesswork and interviews with survivors to publish the first history of the resistance movement inside the camp. Then, in 1991, Adam Syria, a scholar at the Auschwitz-Birkenhaus State Museum, discovered Witold's unpublished memoir, a second report, another fragmentary writings that had been locked away in Poland archives since 1948. This material came with Witold's key to identifying his conspirators. The report I read in 2012 showed Witold to be an exciting chronological of his experience in Auschwitz, who wrote in raw and urgent prose. It was only a fragment and somehow distorted account. He didn't record critical episodes for fear of exposing his colleague to arrest. Hid devastating observations and carefully framed events to suit his military audience. 
Many questions remained, none more critical and elusive than this. What became of the intelligence he risked his life to gather in Auschwitz? Did he provide the British and the Americans with information about the Holocaust long before they publicly recognised the camp's role? If so, why was his reporting suppressed? How many lives could have been saved had his warnings been healed? I also felt personally challenged by the story. I was the same age as Wittold when the war began. I also had a young family and a home. What would make Wittold risk everything on such a mission, and why did his act of volunteering speak so powerfully to me? I recognised in Wittold the same restlessness that has led me to war and troubled me ever since. What could Wittold teach me about my own struggle to connect? So, if you think that sounds interesting as I did, here you go. The Volunteer, the true story of the resistance hero who infiltrated Auschwitz. By a gentleman called Jack Fairweather. I look forward to hearing what some of you thought. Take care.